Okay, so this is really my second time trying to do this. Um, it's just, it's really hard for me. I was upset yesterday. I wanted to do this yesterday, but it just wasn't the right time. So those of you that know me know that I have a much younger brother that's only 18. And um, his special needs, um, technically he's considered medically fragile special needs because he has type 2 diabetes. Special needs, he can't monitor his own sugar um, dose his own insulin, anything like that. Um, he always has to have somebody around to help him. Um, not that that's a problem. Um, we all kind of work together to help him. Um, he will be getting, or should be getting, a Dexcom sometime late this summer, which, for those of you that are that don't know, it's a device that they wear that sends out readings. I think it's every five minutes. Uh, it's over the phone, um, so you can more better monitor their sugar levels, especially when you're dealing with somebody who may not come to you, which I've never had him ever say to me that he feels any different or anything. He's nonverbal, mostly, but he's not. What I mean by that is, he doesn't say much. Um, even with people that he knows, he doesn't say much. Um... Like I said, he's never told me that he's felt bad. I just look for signs that are close to what you're told to look for with sugar problems and see if he needs to be tested outside his normal testing time because sometimes his sugar will bottom out or it will skyrocket and you won't know it. Because sometimes, you know, activity has a lot to do with it. Hydration has a lot to do with it, of course. If he's ate anything, a snack or anything, um... But anyway, um, it's, it's rough. Um, and I also want to point out too, I see so many people associate diabetes with obesity and over, being overweight. My brother was underweight when he was diagnosed with diabetes. He was at school. And they called and said, somebody needs to come get him and take him to the doctor. He's been going to the bathroom constantly and cannot urinate. So, for those of you that are not aware, men or boys do not typically get bladder infections, um, urinary tract infections, anything like that. So, generally there's other things going on. My son's was kidney disease. Um, his body just doesn't process uh, sodium and stuff. Calcium. Um him, his um, pancreas had totally shut down. So we, we were instructed that he was to go directly to Children's Hospital where he was on an insulin drip for a while. Um, and then after that started the road to get him balanced, which has been a very long road, a very stressful road, a very scary road. I know the first time that I was left alone with him, it was very, very scary for me. Um, Luckily, he doesn't really much care. Okay, sorry, my daughter called. I had to talk to her about something important. So, uh, but now that Alex has been leveled out, he's put on weight. He's at a healthy weight. He's not overweight. He's doing good. So, before I go into detail of what I'm am angry about and upset about, I want to say this. For record, he takes four shots a day of insulin. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then a long-lasting nighttime shot, which is very, very important to help keep his sugar balanced throughout the night. And um, he can use his own meter, and he'll show you the numbers on it, but, I mean, it's not like he knows how to count his carbs to dose his insulin. So, now that I've told you that, let me explain why I've been so upset. My brother has been in a program for special needs children since kindergarten. He, and with this program, you stay with the same set of kids throughout school. Some do move ahead before you because they've been in the program longer than you. But generally, the ones that you start with, you go all through school with. Okay, and he's been going to Special Olympic events for as long as I can remember. Um, I know that I've got pictures of my youngest at a Special Olympics event as young as 
uh, kindergarten. Um, maybe younger. I don't remember. I would have to kind of search back dates. And for the record, he's in sixth grade now. So he's been doing a Special Olympic events for a long time. I don't, I can't tell you exactly how long he's been going to Nashville for nationals in Tennessee, but it, it's been more than two years. I know that. Okay, so now we got that out of the way. So he, he is a student at Gibbs. Um, the program that he is in is not offered at every single school. So when you qualify for this program, you are sent to a school closest to you that provides the program that he needs and bus transportation is provided. Now, since all these kids have stayed together since they've been in school, I've gotten to know most of them. Uh, even before he started doing Special Olympic events, I, there was days where I would have to get him off the bus. Some of the kids would still be on the bus. Um, things like that. I've taken him to speech therapy and just different things. I've always been kind of involved. I mean, I was 18 when he was born, almost 19. He, he was born in July, and then in September I turned eight, or I turned 19. So that kind of gives you an idea of the age difference there. So he was more raised kind of like a sibling to my daughter than anything, because there's not even quite three years between them, I don't think. Maybe three years. My daughter's 15, he's 18, he'll be 19 this year, and she'll be 16. Um, so, this past weekend was Special Olympics in Nashville, which is kind of like track and field games. He had three events Saturday, 300 meter, uh, I think that's right, I may be wrong, and then he did two long jumps. He got three gold medals for his time there, which is amazing, and I'm very proud of that, but I have a lot of phone calls to make. And the reason why I'm making this is I'm hoping that once people see this, they say, you know what, this is bullshit and this needs to be seen. So, I was under the impression that these, that, that the children were taken to these events with their um, program directors, teachers, aides, all that stuff. And I was under the impression that nurses went with them because I know when I've been to local events, the nurse has always been there. She's amazing. A uh, very sweet lady. Um, because with this class, you have children that aren't just physically handicapped, mentally handicapped, but they also have health problems. Now, some of you know that I have one with a 504, uh, um, one that may be going on a 504 <laughs> because of the medication that she's on due to sun allergies. So I have an idea how the 504 works, and I know how an IEP works. My brother's had an IEP since he was in kindergarten. Anyway, so, starting off Friday, my mom did not get into Nashville, well, our mom, did not get into Nashville until late Friday, from what I understand. Um, now, I tried to call my mom over the course of the weekend to check on my brother, and I never could get her to answer the phone. Now, in a while. When she got there, she was put basically on the other end of campus, and she had no phone service. Now, while there with the class, he has to stay with his group. So you would assume that there would be somebody there that is capable of monitoring his sugar and helping with his shots. Or at least tell my mother or give her an itinerary for the entire weekend so she knows when he eats so and where. So she knows where to be to check his sugar and to give him his insulin. That wasn't the case. So, when my mom got there Friday and she figured out where she was, she was quite pissed off. Um, Friday, he got one dose of insulin after he arrived. That was it. He did not get his long-lasting nighttime dose. Now, remember, he takes four a day. He did not get his nighttime long-lasting dose, which could have put him in a coma or killed him had his sugar have bottomed or skyrocketed in his sleep which any of you all that deal with children with diabetes, you all know that this is a common factor. Saturday, he got no morning shot. Breakfast, no morning shot. He had no long-lasting shot the night before. Was sent out to do, sent out in the heat, which can affect his sugar. Normally it does, especially when he's active. They told my mom where to go, said he would be easy to find walking on that campus 45 minutes before my mom got to him. Okay, so we got his lunchtime shot, his dinner shot, 
in his long lasting nighttime shot Saturday. Now, in between all this, at some point, my mom confronts Miss Leg, the gym teacher, about this. And she says, Well, according to the accounts of my mother, we have a student who can take care of this on his own, so he should be able to. Okay, for one, anybody that deals with children knows, in general, children are not the same. When you're dealing with special needs children, there's always a variable there because some are more mentally capable of doing things than others. Okay, counting carbs is not an easy thing, and that's how we have to dose my brother's insulin. We have to count the carbs and then figure out how much insulin to give him after he eats. And he does have a carb limit, so that's important. And my mom says, well, he can't. And she states, well, um, if he can't do this, this must, this may, this should be his last year here. We can't afford to bring a nurse, blah, 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 blah. I'm sorry, taking a bunch of special needs children three hours away from home without a nurse or anybody medically trained to deal with this type of thing is very dangerous. Now, I don't know about off school trips, but I know that during school, and my kids go to school in the same county, so I would assume that it's a, it's a countywide policy. Um, kids do not give themselves insulin, even in high school. Um, and I only know this because I'm I, I've obviously very close with the nurse that deals with the school that my children go to because she bounces between the middle high and elementary school so my the the teacher that my brother had through middle school who knows his case very well who knows my brother extremely well says you know what i can handle him and his medical needs while he's away from his mother it's not a problem and my brother adores this man and he is an angel to those children. The teacher stepped in and said, no, we can't let him. He's not with our group. Yet he's a teacher at the middle school that feeds into that high school. So, from my understanding, the Special Olympics is for all of them not to be exclusive of anybody with any kind of medical problem. To me, this comes across as discrimination for medical reasons, which is against the law. Um, it's also a violation of his civil rights. Um, and then Sunday when they were leaving, they checked his sugar. It was at 100. And Mike gave, told, said, give him a snack. He'll be okay till we get where we gotta go. Mike is the teacher that he had before in middle school. And then when they stopped to eat, my mom, and my mom checked it. It was 200. So he did the right thing by giving him a snack. And then mom was able to dose him. Coming home from Nashville, my mom, who used to, I would have to fuss at her if we're driving too slow on the interstate. She finally drives the speed limit on the interstate. She's doing 91 down the interstate to keep up with the coach buses that this school rented that claims that they don't have the means to pay for a nurse to go with a group of special needs children to the Special Olympics. 91 and she could not keep up with them i do not have a name of the bus systems i know it's grand tour of something there was also an incident every january february they do winter games in gallenberg uh they ice skate they snowboard they tube just different it's different every year it seems there's one student in particular that I know, and because I don't know her age, I'm not going to mention any names, but um, I have met her several times. Her and my brother are very close. Um, and look, my brother, she's very vocal. I love her to death. Um, she was injured at Gallenberg. And the same teacher that is saying that my brother will not or should not be allowed to go next year if he cannot monitor and take care of his own sugar levels, um, told her to hush and stop whining, or she would leave and she would not come back to the Winter Games. Well, since that happened, she was checked when she got home. She had an injury. 
Um, I am not sure if it was a knee injury. I'm assuming because since then she's been a wheelchair walker, crutches, even up till now. I know when they did had their dance in the pictures. I, I try to chaperone those dances, but I, I don't always get a chance to. Um, she could not get up and enjoy the dance. She was on crutches and had to keep her leg elevated. And uh, my mom was explaining to me what happened. And I just feel like this teacher is lacking empathy to deal with this type of, to deal with these type of students. I feel like she's too incompetent when it comes to dealing with special needs students. And I'm not saying that she's too incompetent to do her job as a gym teacher. I'm saying she's too incompetent to work with children who require more care and more treatment than other children. Not all of these children are, you know, nonverbal with all these health problems, but a lot of them do have health problems. Some of them, yes, they can take care of them themselves. But even with, like, my daughter, she carries an EpiPen and an inhaler to school. And before she was allowed to do that, and now my daughter has, she, she is not considered, um, um, mentally uh, impaired uh, doctors had to sign off on paper stating that she was able to carry the medicine on her she had to be tested and I witnessed the testing by the school nurse to make sure that she was aware of how to use the medication when to use the medication and on the papers that I signed that I was responsible if she ever misused the medication not the school same thing as my son so, um, when she travels with the band, now with the band, they have hit a medical history on her. They know why she has an EpiPen, an inhaler. She keeps her inhaler with her. Um, if she needs it, she'll take it before she performs. But, um, the EpiPen, they have one that goes in a box that's assigned to a bus. That bus is the same bus that my daughter is assigned to throughout the entire year. All kids that have medication like that that travels with the band, their medicine goes in a box that's assigned to a certain bus that the child is assigned to for the rest of the year. And they keep, they're keep they able to keep close to 200 children with medication and whatnot. They're able to keep this stuff organized. And this band is not just one that just travels locally. They've gone to Ireland. They've gone to England. Um, they were supposed to go to Ireland this past, this year, this school year. But um, with there was problems and there was a no travel or no overseas travel issued with um, schools for the U.S. I guess from what I understand. So they went to Chicago, which. I felt a lot safer with my daughter going to Ireland than Chicago. Um, so she didn't go. But um, had she have went, I know that she would have had her medication on her. And um, I know that the band would have had medication with her and helped her get it on the plane and all that stuff taken care of her on the bus or however they got there. Um, so, yeah. I've contacted the principal of the school, which... Um, I have not heard back from him or the teacher. Um, I have a lot of contacts that I need to make today. A lot of emails need to be sent today. But more importantly, if you share this video and get my brother's story out, I appreciate it so much. Thank you guys for listening. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. I love y'all. Bye.